Moving overseas requires knowledge and planning. Today I'm going to reveal my point-based relocation system, which reveals the most important factors anyone should consider when moving abroad. And today we talk about Thailand, Mexico, and Bulgaria, three very popular countries. Before we start with Thailand, I want to tell you how this point-based relocation system works. How it works is that if a factor is considered very low, meaning there's not a whole lot of benefits to it, then zero points are being issued. If there's some value, but it's still kind of low, there's still very little value, one point is being issued. If there's medium value, two points are being issued. If there is a lot of value, then we issue three points. So let's start with Thailand. The taxes in Thailand, not a very favorable uh, place, you know, to set up a company, or, you know, if you want to move to Thailand, if you want to become a permanent resident, um, you definitely don't benefit from the tax situation as much as you would in a different country that has much lower tax rates and of course a country that doesn't really tax overseas income so in thailand you pay income on your overseas income uh, you pay income tax on your overseas income you pay income tax on your local income you pay you know also company tax so and the tax rates in thailand for income tax you know they apply a progressive tax rate so depending on your income, you know, how, how much income you had, you know, you might only pay 5%, 10% or 35% or more. So it's not really a favorable situation to be in. So that's why we issued one point. Now, if we take a look at the company aspect, and what I mean by that is again, you know, to have a company in Thailand, first of all, you as a foreigner, unless you happen to be an American, you cannot own more than 49% of the company. So that's not a very favorable proposition to be in. And secondly, you have to pay corporate tax. So it's not like Hong Kong, you know, where you can set up a company and pay 0% money, 0% uh, income tax on offshore income. So that's why setting up a company in Thailand for the benefit, you know, of not paying taxes or of, you know, just being able to own 100% of the company, you know, those benefits are just not there. So zero points. Labor, um, I give it two points and let me explain you why first of all in Thailand you know labor is cheap and there, there are a lot of people that are looking for work but the problem with labor in Thailand is that a lot of people that you could hire they don't have sufficient English skills right their English proficiency is very low so you know the people don't really fit for a lot of the uh, positions that you'd want to hire them for so it's, it's it's not like the big companies are hiring Thai employees, you know, for certain certain customer so support stuff or, or like, you know, certain online marketing stuff, you know, that would be more the Philippines, right? So, but again, if you want local labor, I think it's great. You know, if you wanna start a company and they need to speak Thai and, you know, I think that'd be good because it's cheap and there's plenty of availability. So I give that two points. Land, what I mean, land ownership, right? zero because as a foreigner you cannot own a land in thailand so easily unless you want to incorporate a company a complicated structure maybe not something you want to get involved in so i give that zero points as citizenship it's difficult to become a citizen of thailand difficult to impossible there are some ways but it's not so easy so i give that one point networking is thailand a great place to network i think it is so if you are into crypto, if you're into digital marketing, you know, if you want to live in Chiang Mai, you know, there's a big internet marketing community, there are big crypto community, and there are a lot of uh, crypto internet marketing and business events happening in Thailand throughout the year. So I give it three points when it comes to networking, three points, freedom of speech, zero points. Thailand is a monarchy. Yeah, it's just, just not a place where you can speak freely against the government, where you could, you know, like criticize the kingdom. This is not allowed. It is not socially accepted. So if you're in Thailand and, you know, you're like the kind of person who values freedom of speech, you should probably look elsewhere because you don't want to run into problems. You don't want to get jailed. So I give that zero points. Safety, I give it two points. I think Thailand is quite safe. It is not as safe as Canada. It is not as safe as New Zealand. It is not as safe as Iceland, but it's relatively safe. You know, it, it ranks like somewhere in the middle, you know, depending on what index we're talking about. So I give it two points for safety. Time zone, zero points. 
it's in an awkward time zone. Southeast Asia is in an awkward time zone. You know, if you value, for instance, uh, just having a regular work schedule when you work from, say, nine to five, then maybe Thailand is not for you, especially if you work online. If your income is uh, dependent and predicated on, you know, other parts of the world, say Europe, North America, you know, Latin America. So it's difficult to make that happen in Thailand unless you're willing to work late at night, late in the mornings, because if you work with clients or if you have partners on the other side of the world, you need to sacrifice a lot. And I personally experienced that. So I give it zero points for the time zone. The food, Thai food ranks very high on most indexes. Um, most people love Thai food. So I give it three points. I think it's great. It's very diverse, really good food. Internet, I think the internet in Thailand is good. Um, it's great, especially in like Pattaya, Bangkok. I'd give it three points. Obviously in the more rural areas, it can be difficult. And you know, you may experience internet connection issues, but I think generally speaking, the internet in Thailand is pretty good. So I give it three points. Life expectancy, I give it two points. I think right now the life expectancy in Thailand is set at 77 years. That means out of every two people, one person exceeds 77 years and one person doesn't. So, so much to life expectancy, that's two points. Corruption, uh, there's a lot of corruption in Thailand uh, in many ways, you know, not just when it comes to the government, but also when it comes to, you know, like police, when it comes to, you know, anything you want to do in Thailand, like incorporate a business, um, run a local restaurant, whatever you want to do, right? There is quite a lot of corruption in Thailand. So I give it, one point, I'd say that's low value, you know. It depends on how you want to play it. I mean, if you think corruption is a good thing, you know, if you want to use corruption in your favor, which I don't recommend, but some people think like, okay, Thailand is good because there's a lot of corruption, so I can get away with not paying taxes or I can do certain things, that's up to you, you know. But I'm just saying from a corruption standpoint, Thailand has a lot of corruption. So one point, healthcare, I give it one point. Why? You could argue, well, Thailand, I mean, talking about Bangkok, Bangkok has some of the best hospitals in the world. And I agree with that, but Bangkok is just one city. How about, you know, smaller cities, towns? What happens if you live in Isan or if you live in Southern Thailand, the hospitals aren't that great. So unless you want to live in a big city, you're going to have problems with healthcare in Thailand. And there are a lot of people that move to Thailand you know, to enjoy the retirement years there. And they ended up moving back because they had some issues there with healthcare and they got treatment in the West where communication was, you know, less of a problem and also where they knew there's more reliability. So I give it one point. Cleanliness, one point. Thailand is not very clean. It can be pretty messy, you know, also talking about Bangkok, rural areas. So there is not this great environmental awareness um, executed by the locals. So I give it one point. English speaking, one point. It's very difficult to get by with English in Thailand. Anything you want to do, you want to work, you want to, you know, hire people, you want to make local friends. Generally, most people, you know, don't speak a whole lot of English. So very low English proficiency, unless potentially in Bangkok or potentially in Chiang Mai. But again, if you associate yourself with foreigners, English will be less of an issue than if you were to associate yourself with the locals. The cost, the cost of living is great. Thailand offers good value for your money. I still believe that even though I personally wouldn't live in Thailand anymore. So I think the cost of living is reasonably uh, good considering the value that you're getting. So I give it three points. It's high. It's a high value. The beaches, definitely high. Thailand has some of the best beaches. If you take a look at the islands, you know, southern Thailand, fantastic. Three points. Pets. What do I mean by pets? And you might think, well, that's not important to me. I don't have pets. I'm talking just about how friendly the locals and just the country in general is towards animals. You know, is there a lot of xenophobic behavior towards animals? And I think that is the case. If you want to have a dog and you want to live in Bangkok, then maybe that's not so great because there are very few parks where you are allowed to walk your dog. I, I remember when I lived in Bangkok, you know, I pretty much got expelled from most parks. They don't want to see dogs in the parks there. I know there are exceptions, there are special dog parks, but it's not a city where you can easily have a dog, walk your dog around 
and you know there are little if any green spots so you would really need to live very close to a green area that is pet friendly and that really limits your ability to find an apartment that's Bangkok obviously that is no problem if you live in a rural area in Thailand it is much better on the islands but generally speaking people are not very friendly towards dogs so I give it one point so this was Thailand right and uh, we got a total of 19 values I'm sorry a total of 19 factors and the maximum points a country could get you know that's 57 points so Thailand got a grand total of 28 points, which is just a little bit less than 50% of the total points available. How do we look with Mexico? Okay, with taxes, Mexico is also not so great because you're being taxed on your overseas income and on your local income. That's if you're a resident of Mexico. So in terms of taxes, not a whole lot of benefits there you pay income tax Mexico does have a progressive income tax rate same goes for not the same goes for corporate taxes but you do pay corporate taxes in Mexico so it's not a tax haven in terms of company the good thing here is that you can own hundred percent of a Mexican company it's great for foreigners who want to settle down start a business maybe hire employees for like a marketing firm maybe they want to start like a call center whatever you want to do I think I give it two points here because first of all you can own 100% of a Mexican company which is not possible in Thailand so two points labor I give it two points for the simple reason that it's inexpensive to hire an employee in Mexico there are people especially in central Mexico in the bigger cities Mexico City Guadalajara there are quite a lot of people that speak English but it is not so common right so I think labor because it is affordable I give it two points where there are more English speaking people I'd give it three points so only two points here land ownership three points as a foreigner you can own land in Mexico not a problem citizenship unlike Thailand where it is very difficult to become a citizen you can become a citizen in Mexico after a certain number of years of permanent residency so that is all possible three points networking I think Mexico is also a great place to network there are a lot of events happening throughout the year you've got uh, marketing events crypto events there are a lot of North Americans and Europeans living in Mexico so I think it is just as good as Thailand I give it three points freedom of speech it exists and it doesn't exist so I give it one point you can't really criticize certain things in Mexico so one point safety is a definite con you know we're seeing this all over Mexico where people are being kidnapped murdered uh, there's a lot of pity crime so I'm not saying there's a lot of violent crime happening in most areas but violent crime definitely exists in many areas and as a rule of thumb I would say that Mexico is not as safe as Thailand so I give it zero points the time zone is a big advantage you know if you work with North America with Europe it's much easier to adjust to the time zone than if you were to live in Thailand so I give it three points the food Mexican food is good many people like it they like it cheesy so I give it two points definitely good the internet in Mexico is great uh, I personally didn't have any internet connection issues during my stays in Mexico so I give it three points life expectancy is medium the average life expectancy in Mexico is currently 75 years so it's not high high would be 80 years or more corruption is definitely very present in Mexico there's a lot of corruption in all different areas so I give it zero points for that healthcare is so so depending on where you're located I mean it always depends right if you go to a private hospital you can get great health care generally speaking the public hospitals in Mexico are also not as great as in Western countries so I give it one point cleanliness depends uh, I'd say that Mexico is cleaner than Thailand in many ways not in all ways there are certain places that are dirtier certain places that are cleaner so I'd give it one to two points here gave it one point English English is not widely spoken in Mexico that means if you want to live in Mexico on a permanent basis you better learn the local language which happens to be Spanish 
unlike Thailand that does not use the alphabet, it's much easier to speak Spanish or learn Spanish than it is to learn Thai. They use their own characters in Thailand that it's much more difficult to learn. So, but again, you know, since English is not widely spoken, I think that's zero points. The cost of living. Mexico is not as cheap as Thailand. You know, depending on where you want to live, if you want to live in a nice place in Mexico, definitely going to pay more in rent. Um, food prices tend to be higher, especially on the, on the Caribbean side where you can pay really, really crazy prices during peak season, which happens to be from November through February, March. So I give it just two points. You know, it's still cheaper than Western countries. If you want to live cheaper in Mexico, you want to stay out of the more touristy areas, meaning the Caribbean side is probably not where you want to be. I'd say the beaches in Mexico, they are good, but there aren't as many pretty beaches in Mexico as they are in Thailand. So I give it just one point. Pets, much easier to fly to Mexico with a dog or a cat. It's easier to bring an animal in and out. Plus, I think the country is friendlier towards pets than a country like Thailand. So I give it two points. So in Mexico, you can see we got a total of 32 points, which happens to be more than 50% of the available points. The last country is Bulgaria. Let's talk about Bulgaria, a country located in Eastern Europe. In terms of taxes, very interesting. So the corporate tax rate in Bulgaria is capped at 10%. So no matter what your volume is, you're never gonna pay more than 10%. Likewise, the income tax is capped at 10%. No matter how much you make, you're never going to be taxed more than 10%. In fact, you may even end up paying less than 10% in taxes because you can, you know, utilize certain deductions. So it is very tax friendly. It's not a tax haven, but it's very tax friendly. But Bulgaria uh, taxes you on your worldwide income as well. So I give it two points. Now company, uh, you can own 100% of a company in Bulgaria. So unlike Thailand, where you need to have a local partner to start a company and give the local partner 51%, that is not the case in Bulgaria. So it's a great place to set up a company also tax wise. Labor, I give it three points because first of all, many Bulgarians speak English. You know, that, that's just much more present in Bulgaria than it is in Mexico or Thailand. Labor is also relatively inexpensive. Bulgarians have a great work ethic, so I give it three points. Land ownership, a foreigner can own 100% of a property in Bulgaria, so it is definitely better than in Thailand where that's just not the case. Citizenship, you can become a citizen of Bulgaria. Right now, there aren't any, you know, like super fast track options that eliminate certain requirements. It was easier, you know, two years ago, but there is a clear path to citizenship. Whereas in Thailand, that is uh, much more complicated, uh, many more requirements. So it's much easier to become a citizen of Bulgaria than it is to become a citizen of Thailand. So I give it uh, two points. Networking, so, so. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of big events happening in Bulgaria. So I give it one point. Freedom of speech, two points. Uh, there's more freedom of speech in Bulgaria than there is in Mexico and Thailand. Safety, I give it two points. Bulgaria is a relatively safe country. Um, there are no cartels operating in Bulgaria. There is little, if any, gun violence. So I give it two points. Time zone, I give it two points. It's not located in the Americas. So if you were to work with North America, you know, it's gonna be a slight disadvantage living in Bulgaria. So that's also uh, two points. The food, two points. European food, Eastern European food, pretty good. But I think food is a matter of taste. So some like it, some don't. But I would say generally the food in Bulgaria is pretty good. So I give it two points. The internet in Bulgaria, I give it two points. It's pretty good. In fact, in many cases, it's great. So maybe I should give it three points, but I give it two points. Life expectancy, I give it two points. All also pretty good. Corruption is definitely present in Bulgaria. So I give it one point. Healthcare. In Bulgaria, I'd say it's better than in Mexico and Thailand. And so I give it two points. Cleanliness, depending on where you're located, uh, can be pretty clean. Obviously, there are some places that are not super clean. It's slightly dirtier than Western Europe. So I give it two points for cleanliness. English, uh, I would give it uh, one point. Probably should give it two points. The younger generations, they speak English because they want to work in different countries. And it's pre pretty much embedded in the education system. The older generations, they don't speak a whole lot of English. So maybe I should give it two points because 
English, you know, among the younger people is definitely widely spoken, uh, unlike Mexico and Thailand. But anyway, I gave it just one point. The cost, pretty good. Cost of living is low and you get good value considering, you know, taxes, labor, considering, you know, it's pretty easy and cheap to rent. So I give it three points for cost. The beaches aren't that great. You get the Black Sea, but it's not that impressive. So, but if you want to go to a nice beach, you can just drive across the southern border and get into Greece. So just a few hours by car and you could have some nice beaches, but the local beaches aren't the best. So I give it zero points. Pretty pet friendly, not the most pet friendly country, but generally very pet friendly. It's very easy to bring a dog into Bulgaria, bring it out of Bulgaria. There are a lot of parks that allow dogs. Um, there's not a whole lot of xenophobic behavior towards dogs by landlords. So I'd say I give it two points. So Bulgaria received the highest score out of all countries that we discussed, 37 points. And I think that overall Bulgaria offers the best value. Mexico ranked number two with 32 points and Thailand ranked number three with 28 points. Something I wanted to add is that I did not discuss weather and dating for the simple reason that I believe weather is a matter of taste. There are some people that want to live in a cold, you know, country where they have multiple seasons. And then there are people that want to live in a more tropical environment, you know, where the weather is just hot and sticky throughout the year so they can go to the beaches. So it's a matter of taste, you know, not every person wants to live in Thailand. Not every person would want to live in Scandinavia or Eastern Europe. So I think it's a matter of taste. So, you know, some people want it, some people not. So it wouldn't have been fair to include that. Same goes for dating. There are single guys out there, single women out there. So maybe they'd prefer a place like Thailand over Bulgaria. And likewise, you know, if you are a family, you know, if you happen to be a family of three or four, you might not want to live in Thailand because first of all, you cannot own land, you cannot own property and the dating scene of Thailand would be irrelevant to you. So it's a big difference if you're a single guy, a single millennial, you know, who wants to live in Thailand or if you are already married and have kids and are looking for a more balanced lifestyle where your kids can grow up in a safe and uh, well-mannered environment. So I think that makes a big difference. What do you think about the three places that we just discussed in this video? What are your thoughts? Leave a comment below and let us know. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'm uploading new videos on digital nomad locations, travel updates and investment advice several times a week right now. And if you got some more time left, check out these videos.